We're at the back of the Crown Court still. They're late. And uh, we need to have some comic relief, some uh, lightheartedness. So you've got the Chad, spinny, moti, steel, hole in the ground barrier thing that there's no way you can get through that, even with a bloody armored, you know, bank truck. That would stop you. But then if you're clever, you're like, aha! Then you come over here to the virgin plastic chain. There you go. <laughs> Not allowed, but you, you can maybe you can maybe do this one even on a, a Fisher Price, my first little vehicle. Uh, here you can see the Chad one in motion. Look at this. It works. He's gonna do it. Not allowed. Oh, it's okay. It'll be all right. Oh no no, I'm just getting the barrier. I'm not filming in the court. It's uh, as long as I'm in public, it's good. Oh, dude, ignore me. Don't look. There's more. Th th you've got a whole court full of murderers and rapists. Don't worry about the cameraman. Don't worry, madam. It's okay. I want to film this thing. God, I mean, there's a lady over there telling me off. Can you see her center screen? It's okay. I'm on the pavement outside. It's okay. It's not your concern. I'm sorry. I've got to do my job. Hello, sir. How are you? You all right? Okay, well, what we'll, we'll negotiate, I'll stand on there. There we go. We're good. See? Reasonable man. We found, we found a solution. She's not happy. <laughs> God damn it. Like, it's not normal for people to get that upset about a man with a professional camera. Especially when he has a hipster mustache. Okay, I look a bit like Saddam Hussein. Who um, he did he did gas the Kurds, but I'm not here to gas any Kurds. I'm here to capture some photons. Oh shit! Am I going to get told off? Oh god! Major incident here. God damn it, Karen! Relax. And I'll start filming again if it gets exciting. Okay, just a quick update. It's been five minutes since the last video. There's a queue of traffic on the inside. There's van man trying to get in. I don't know who the well-dressed gentleman on the left of the image is, but I am on a public sidewalk or pavement. We're not in America, it's pavement. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, my actions are allowed. Look at that. Van man, straight in. Blue Ford Fiesta man that was very upset. I think security have told him, crack on you self-important narcissist. It's just a man with a camera stood on the public pavement. Get on with your life. And he's about to. And this all started because I wanted to see these things being driven over. That's it. That's all it is. Walk away. Drive away. All right, all right, guys, Hold, bear with me. Don't touch that dial. Don't you dare click on another recommended video. All right, here we go, it's spinning down again. Here we go, Fiesta Man's gonna do it. Followed by Range Rover Evoke Lady. Ah, 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 cameraman one. Nervous, self-obsessed court staff, nil. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. And uh, thank you to the three junior doctors I bumped into buying my Greg's uh, lunch meal deal in Piccadilly Gardens. I was about to do a wild goose chase down to Manchester's Royal Infirmary. And they said, no, 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 no. You want to get yourself to St. Peter's Square. That's where there's a few hundred of us uh, on strike. So for those of you not in the know, today is day three of the 72-hour junior doctor, doctor walkout. A massive strike and uh, as someone that has tried to use a hospital in a slight emergency in the last year I agree with the junior doctors I believe their cause is just and uh, hey madam I agree with you go on and uh, something has to be done because uh, British hospitals are overcrowded there's not enough services for people 
people are on purpose staying away from hospitals because they know it's a hell hellhole, like in a third world country, and it shouldn't be like that. This is Great Britain. We want everything in history, everything. World's biggest empire, we want it. World War One, we won it. World War Two, we won it. Cold War, okay, we were on a, standing on the shoulder of our Yankee friends, but we won it. And uh, we need good hospitals. We need a good national health service. So go on, junior doctors, you show them. There's a lady of a North American accent giving a speech. Crowd went wild, I just missed it. But uh, good atmosphere. I think they believe their cause is just. And uh, from my point of view, here in the center, their cause is just. There you go. All good? How are you guys? There's some dangerous junior doctors. They're complaining about pay or something. <laughs> budget announcement which we're due to hear in about 20 minutes and just see if we think that that's in line with what we suspect that workers need in order to deliver growth for the economy. So okay, we're going to look at a pension cap boost. That means that the amount that you can save tax-free into your pension is going to go up to 1.8 million. Great news for junior doctors who are going to have to do another 30 odd years of the workforce on poverty wages to get absolutely nowhere near that. <laughs> be able to claim 50% more of the cost of childcare back in hopes that, that will encourage more parents back into work. But let's just remind ourselves, those are people who are in work and having to claim benefits because their poverty wages don't allow them to cover the costs of their rent, their mortgage repayments, their bills, and for people to look after their children while they're there. Well, the energy price cap might be extended past April, so that's good news. But the 400 quid that we've all been receiving to help us with the cost of living crisis and heat our homes throughout the winter that's seemingly continuing on into the spring, that's going to be ditched. So it's not looking great for us. I suppose what we might want to do is consider coming together as workers to demand that we look at an organic set, an organic set of measures to deliver growth by putting money in the pockets of workers who will go out and they will spend that money on goods and services provided by local small businesses and self-employed people and they will circulate it because what we need to see is we need to see flourishing in the public sector so that we can see flourishing in the private sector. This is not just our fight, we do it on behalf here, here. of solidarity. Hell yeah! Thank you. They make a very compelling argument, the speakers that I've been hearing. One of the fundamental basics of any civilization is healthcare. And when that goes kaput, everything else unravels. My props walk away. How did, how did they know? Here's Moses parting. Moses must part the seas. Let the tram through. Let the tram through. Hit it. Look at that. A most British protest. We don't even block the, the transport. I think this man's a bit drunk. He has a bottle of wine in his pocket. Very well. Is he okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Right. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Marco. Polo, you know me as Polo. Right. Marco Polo. I'm not, yeah, Marco Polo. Are you are you with the strikers or against them? No. Oh, I don't believe in what they're talking about. They're chatting bullshit. They're chatting shit. Why are they chatting shit? I'll tell you why. Why are they chatting? Because, because what about people who've been waiting on the list for three to four to five years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't even get a team done. Yeah, I'm no, but the out. no, but these doctors—they want more pay because they're getting underpaid, 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 underpaid
They want to help more people. So what you're talking about, waiting list, the doctors want to help them. Oh, that's a different Wait. argument. That is a different. Well, why don't you deal with what we got here in the first place? Yeah. You fucking sort that out. Get, deal, deal with the problem that we got here. Yeah, yeah. Then you can deal with the rest. Well, you've got a valid point, but now I, I, I fucking got a big valid point. I'm, yeah. like, I'm not saying that it's a free point. Yeah. No worries, man. Thank you, Marco Polo. I appreciate it. Thank you. See you. Take care, man. Fish bump. There you go. Wisdom from the drunkard, if you can call it wisdom. <laughs> it's a very fetching tennis ball and orange, yeah, orange golf ball color. I've not seen an orange tennis ball since the 90s. Do they still make them? I hope so. For what we believe in, our worth and our value as professionals, we've been pushed to our limits and our patience has worn thin by a government that continues to mistreat us. And we're here today to have our voice heard, to get the respect and the value that we deserve. Doctors were forced to work on understaffed, unsafe roses, threatened for having hot drinks, accommodation robbed away, leave denied, after you paid for exams. For too long, we've been taken for granted, and our goodwill has been abused, and now it's depleted. And when it's the government's turn to reciprocate, there was none. The government imposed a wage freeze. The government imposed a contract. The government imposed conditions. This reminds me actually. No, that's not a post box, that's a phone box. God damn it, I need to post something to the passport office. <laughs> So, uh, best one I've seen yet, it's the not sure if I should uh, fry meme from Futurama. Not sure if I should move country or change career. Now imagine putting professional doctors in a position where they have to choose whether to abandon the country or like be, be underpaid. It's ridiculous. And tell me about the 30% off. What does that mean and since when? Um, yeah, ba basically... Speak up a bit. Just, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Um, pay, pay cut the last few years. What we want is a restoration of our pay. Basically. Yeah, and I saw another sign that was like 30% uh, since 2018. Inflation and wage freezing, it means that in reality, under real money, you're 30% less paid than you were five, 10 years ago. No, I support your strike, guys. I support it, so good luck. Thank you. Special thanks to Sitar, man. Or if you prefer Sitar, I say Sitar. Sitar? He really makes me think quite deeply about life. It's that uh, profound experience of seeing someone play something extremely well. You just know the amount of time and love and passion they've put into it. So it's a bit windy. I'll cup the microphone a bit, give it a bit of cupping, cup those balls. I just want to ask you all a question. Imagine, let me just grab my strap. It's flapping around a bit. Imagine the wonderful world we had if more people, if more people knew what they were, who they were, where they come from, just how special it all is. Not allowed, says the tram, no more sitar for you. And big love to Ryan and Rough Trade. Let's do a drive by. Thank you, Ryan. It's a return of banjo, man. Oh! Never gets old, I love it. <laughs> There we go. And there we don't go. Bye. All right. We're just outside the Crown Court on uh, at Crown Square. Now, have I got a story for you guys? Let me just get a more cinematic background. So, I've just been kicked out of the Crown Court, escorted out by a friendly cop with blue eyes called Amar. Amante, something like that. So, as you know, Thomas Cashman, what a name for a gangster. Cashman, let me take my backpack off. Too much schoolboy, schoolboy looks here. 
you know, a big uh, philosophy in this country is free and open, you know, for the public to, to witness justice being served. So uh, in the confusion, there's like six, six layers of security as you go through the court towards this gangster's trial. And this is why there's all these armed police here with the red asterisks. Oh, a lot of armed cops. They're not taking any chances here. And um, I go in and a lot of the cops here recognize me. So I get the nod, I give them a wave, and obviously my camera's not with me. It's been confiscated at reception. You're not allowed professional cameras inside the court building. And I get waved through, waved through, until I'm literally amongst all the detectives, all the Scouser detectives and other ones. And uh, then a, a DCI supervisor, some detective supervisor lady, she challenges me, excuse me, can I ask who you are? As I was trying to get into the public gallery. And I say, yeah, I'm just a member of the public. And then she's like, no, not allowed, not allowed. And she actually said, not allowed. And I said, no, I, I must politely disagree with you. Um, it's a fundamental philosophy of this country that I can go in as the public to see justice being served. And she goes, well, you can go disagree with a the judge then. And then luckily, before an argument could ensue and DCI Detective Karen could get too angry, a couple other cops who recognized her said, Charlie, we got it. We'll take it from here, Detective Karen. We know him. It's not a threat. And I got literally escorted through the bowels of the building, through more security layers. Outside, I got cashed outside at the cashman trial. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to say, I said to the detective lady, I said, well, how can the public view the trial? And she looks at me sarcastically. And she goes, by video annex from Liverpool. And I gave her that 0800 555, oh, come on now, Karen. And uh, that's when the cops said, we know him. We'll take it from here. DCI supervisor. She was quite stressed, but understandably so. It's a murder trial where the victim is a nine-year-old girl in her own house. So high stakes and I uh, hope I haven't been disrespectful. So may justice be served. I like it a lot. It's a new perspective. And uh, look, look how uh, your brain will collapse when it goes, oh, oh, it's a van. You're like, oh, it's a bunch of uh, police BMWs. Oh, and actually it's a Geo Amy van, prisoner transport. Oh. Some guys in the windows giving a thumbs up. Yes. Good people. Thank you. And that is where we've come from. As you can see, the rows and rows and rows of cars with their lights left on. Very inefficient. Greta Thunberg says, switch those lights off, police cars. But frankly, my dear, I don't care. How dare you? So uh, there's a big operation to try and catch mobile phone thieves and pickpockets and there's just some people looking a bit sus, getting uh, questioned, maybe even searched by the uh, police community support officers inside Tim Hortons. And I had a, a Canadian, he said, Charlie, cover Tim Hortons in the UK, we think it's weird. Well, about four years ago, Tim Hortons kicked off in the UK in Salford of all places and it's been very popular. You know, it's all about the donuts and the Tim Balls, what they called Tim Bits, Tim Bollocks. So, yep, Canadian company. I think it's owned by a Brazilian or Portuguese hedge fund now. So, uh, it's Canadian in name only. But, uh, are they guilty? Hey, Tone, you all right? You okay, man? I don't know. Innocent till proven guilty, obviously, but... Good work, guys. Good work. Oh, the Manchester Argonaut by Jason Wilshire Mills. Wee. <laughs> Wee. If you like color, you'll like the Manchester Argonaut. But uh, it's all about the face, really, isn't it? Okay, everybody. The time is 3:34 p.m. The suspect in the nine-year-old murder, um, nine-year-old girl's murder, will be soon escorted out in a, uh, an armored van with a bunch of armed police. There'll be a decoy van, a helicopter flying overhead, and the purpose will be to prevent him being killed by the mob and to prevent other gangsters breaking him free from the prisoner transport. Now, I'll try and get it. If I don't get it, this might be the last clip, but if I do get it, if you hover over the timeline, you go, oh shit, there's another couple minutes, or what have you. So we'll get it, 
We'll get it. Thank you, sir, for ducking. Appreciate it. Yep, there'll be more clips. I'm sure of it. They're not all here for no reason. Very friendly uh, civil court. The guy from behind me is going to find out when the Thomas Cashman transport is going to come. And they were all yellow. So we got the BMW and the, no, that's a Ford Mondeo. And coming down here, the first of the Volvo uh, Ford, oh, here we go. It begins. And get this, prisoner's transport, the guy, Thomas Cashman, he's not going back to Liverpool on remand in the prison there. He's only staying at HMP Strangeways, His Majesty's Prison Manchester, it's now called. Big scene of a massive riot in the 90s when the prisoners took over the roof. Very, very, very famous prison riot. And it kind of helped reform prisons. Okay, here's the scene outside the uh, Crown Court at 16.05, 100 hours. It begins, I believe behind this BMW here, you've got the two decoy vans and the real one will be mixed up. So if someone tries to spring them, they won't know which vehicle he's in. It just creates more confusion for the would-be gangsters to try and get them released. So I guess it makes sense for the cops to go into the building for the briefing to get ready, to know where to, what to do, where to... All right, I'm getting told to F off, but this is okay. It is very much allowed. I'll go this way. They try and give me shit. I just say, Do you not know who I am, young uniformed man? I am the unofficial mayor of Manchester. Watch how everyone waves at me as I go around. But uh, to not be flippant and to joke about this, massive condolences to the... Um, what's her name? A little girl's called Olivia something. Massive condolences to her family. And uh, her mother was in court today. And that's uh, very traumatic. I can't imagine that. I have a daughter the same age. So uh, we'll come back once the prisoner's transport actually takes place. Let's just get that closing. And there you go. Enter the decoy. Not what I thought it was, but uh, just people walking out. Won't be long now. For a second, I thought Mr. Streetcars, Toyota Prius, was going to go in and join our armed police friends in there, but uh, not allowed. I very much doubt this is our man, or the man, not our man. You've got to disown someone who allegedly does such a thing. But if we just stay on the pavement but bring our arms round, you'll see it. Uh, it won't be long. Okay, ladies and gents, it's uh, beginning now. We're, uh, we're on. The tennis ball colored cops are out in force. Van man, three more down there. There's the road traffic people on the corner. Now, shall I stand there on the corner or shall I stand at the genesis of the drama where it comes out? I'm probably gonna stand at the genesis of the drama where it comes out. And it is raining heavy. Let's uh, hope that the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark I does okay. Let's see how waterproof it actually is. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the camera is, the kit lens, the 20 to 60 mil lens is stuck at 24 mil. And uh, it's my favorite mil. So not getting it repaired just yet. And I, I blew off the dust off the sensor. And uh, the, the dot has disappeared. Hello, Mr. Hello, Sergeant, how are you? You okay? Well, in a couple of minutes, yes. a roadblock's gonna go on. Okay. Don't mind you going down on the corner where the no public problem. cap. Where, where would you say is the best place for me to oh, stand sorry. to get the... There or there would no, the best place to here. stand? Thanks, Sergeant, good man. Yeah, so no, no pedestrian. Show you. Good man. Look at this guy's friendly, Sarge, woo! So, um, yeah, I just wanna get the best angle. Could I stand under that big umbrella, that white umbrella thing directly opposite? 
as long as I get it all coming out of the bowels of the building. Bowels of the building. The bowels. I, I, the, I wanted to say the, the anus of the building, but that's a bit too graphic. The bowels. <laughs> you can stand where that white shelf is there. Brilliant. Nice one. Thank all you very right, much. Sir. Appreciate very it. Much. All the best, Sarge. Good, good. You even get tips from the police where to stand. And uh, I clock this spot as a good spot. It's going to be fully blocked off by coppers. Now, uh, as I have the battery, I'm going to keep it rolling for a bit because it, and allow us to soak up the rain. Hello. And the atmosphere. There's a friendly Sarge over there, directly outside. They block off the street, so no pedestrians allowed on the street. Fair enough. And uh, be any moment now. Let me just show you a little bit of the architecture around here. First of all, the surfboard benches, longboard. A bit of Beach Boys coming to brain there, coming to mind. God only knows what I'd be without you. God only knows. Hand over the camera. Stop the electronics getting too buggered. And uh, we are at... Oh yeah, I was showing you guys some architecture, wasn't I? There we go. You always risk getting uh, droplets on the lens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop filming for a sec, review the lens, make sure everything's perfect, and then I'll come back to you guys in about 30 seconds. But for you, it'll be instant. You won't even know. Time travel. All right, cars are waving through. It was actually five minutes, guys. You've uh, leapt forward five minutes in time. I think they're going to close off the road now. Last, uh, the red car and the blue car had a race. Who remembers that Mars Bar advert? From the late 80s, early 90s. Jeez. But uh, I'm still in a good location because they may mix and match it. He may go that way, even though Her Majesty's prison, sorry, His Majesty's prison, Strange Ways, is that way. So, but uh, I'm going to pause it now and come back to you guys in the future. Now I'm going to try and get a, a shot down the street here if I can. don't want to get into too much trouble, but I think we'll be okay. Sorry. The agent is on the radio. Neo and Morpheus are uh, in the building. Okay, I think that's the traffic. Yeah, actually the lady's stopping the traffic down there, center screen. Uh, there's a traffic, road traffic officer. Yeah, she stopped it. I think this is it, guys. And I think down there, she stopped it as well. So, we'll get it. All right, first vehicular not allowed. It's an Uber picking up passageros and the policeman saying, no, no, oh, the passenger's trying. She's trying and it's all gonna kick off. Let her get in, just let her get in, let her get in. Be reasonable, be reasonable. Yeah, she's in. Worked out. Little did we know he's, uh, why is he driving up to the bowels of the building? Ah, uh -huh, he's turning around. Me and my Hollywood brain. <laughs> I was like, oh. The bowels open. I hope this is it. This has dragged on a bit. He's got the thumbs up from the Sarge. Roads are blocked off. Another thumbs up. Let's see. I doubt it because there should be armed police in front of this one. This is just some random criminal. A common criminal, not Thomas Cashman. Or right, hold on, here, here we go. Here's the police cars, here we go. Right. Oh no, they're getting ready. They're getting ready. It's the ne next lot after this one. A bit more of a, a little flurry of activity from the officers just here. 
Sergeant's uh, excited about something, having a little dance, all good. All right, no pedestrians now. This is it. <laughs> uh, no pedestrians there, so imminent. Okay, it begins. Here we go, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. I understand. Here's perfect. I was told earlier, I'm just pushing my luck. Because uh, my viewers on the Charlie Veach show do deserve the very best photons from as close as you can get. So, without further ado, let's just watch it. Let's just enjoy it. Feels like the start of a Formula One Grand Prix. They've done the warm up lap. Now, uh, number one and number two, pole position, and his uh, number two here in the McLaren Mercedes, or shall I say BMW Williams. There's an armed officer with the Heckler & Koch semi-automatic rifle in between the two cars right now. He has headphones on, or earmuffs, and the uh, baseball cap that you often see them. The uh, Look at, oh, there's a bit of a crowd now. Oh! Not allowed! Not allowed, Mr. Maroon Jacket. I like his brown shoes. But he's like, totally. Oh. Sorry? Thomas Cashman, he's accused of uh, murdering the nine year old girl in Liverpool in that Wonder. gangland. So, um, yeah, if he's guilty, um, he should probably dispose of himself. Yeah, right, yeah. So, uh, here we go. I'm going to push my luck, get forward a little bit. Here we go. I'm now a foot forward and I'm allowed to. And some more there. Any media people here? No media. I'm the only media. Look at that. Fair enough. It does take place every day, but it's the first time I get it. So, uh, yeah, let's just enjoy it. Enjoy the atmosphere. I just know that if I stop filming, it'll all happen. <laughs> the instant I press stop, something crazy will happen. And that's how Sod's Law works. I'll tell you, whilst we're waiting, I might as well rant at my viewers. The uh, mathematics of Sod's Law dictates that when faced... Oh, here's some prisoner, some private prisoner people from Geo Amy. You can tell by the uniform and the, the jack boots, the invade Poland boots. So the mathematics of Sod's Law, when any human being is faced with a 50-50 choice, he or she will choose the wrong one 90% of the time. Not allowed, madam, not allowed. So yeah, you got a 50-50 chance, you'll always choose the wrong one. That's Sod's Law. Lens isn't getting soaked. They're not allowed. So quality not. Oh, thank God it's only a couple of minutes. I've been here for an hour and a half. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. I might make it home before six. You never know. Not even the prison staff are allowed through. They're only civilians like me. They're just peons like moi. Speaking of peons, peasants, who here remembers Plebgate when that Tory guy on the bike got in trouble for arguing with the police? Uh, not allowed! He got in trouble for arguing with the police at uh, the gates of Downing Street and uh, apparently called them plebs. But uh, technically, if you're not an aristocrat with land, you're a pleb. We're all plebs. Could any of my aristocratic blue-blooded viewers leave a comment in the in the comment section? And uh, we'll all come and um, hang out at your mansion for the next big party. But uh, if you're watching, Mr. or Mrs. Aristocrat, you are the only non-pleb. Saw a great comment on the video yesterday, may the pleb up uprising commence. 
Why not? I'm actually going to come back a bit. It's uh, raining heavily now. Let's get under my awning. Let's get under my thing. There we go. I'll rush forward towards the cop. Um, in a non-threatening manner when uh, it is time to capture. Okay, guys, any second now. I can feel it. The tension is building. There's not been a car come through this road, which is called Gart Side. Not Garfield. Not far side, guard side. Okay, we have movement. The beamers are moving. I'm sure this policeman will let me know how far I can come forward. Is he here okay? Here's okay? Nice one, here we go. So, uh, you know, the rain's good for something. The blue and red flashing lights does look good on the wet pavement. Here we go, armed boys. And here we go. I like it. Mega show of force. And uh, that is a, um, a modified AR-15. It's got a 30 round magazine with the translucent plastic uh, cover on the magazine. So you can do a quick check, see how many rounds you have in the, in the magazine. It uh, fires automatic and semi-automatic, I believe. Very reliable. Age-old design, about 70 years old design, been modified. There's about a thousand variants of the AR-15. It fires a full metal jacketed 5.56 millimeter um, standard NATO round. And as we said yesterday, it's two in the chest, one in the dome, and then your assailant cannot detonate. So here we go, enough of my ranting. So for those of you just joining the channel, which is ridiculous to say because it's not live, it's uh, the prisoner Thomas Cashman, what a name, who is accused, here we go, okay, enough, accused of murdering a nine-year-old girl. And that is how they do it. You look fantastic. So, thank you. So, uh, you know, a big build-up for ten seconds, but big build-up. Hello, uh, prisoner staff. Look at private prisoner staff. Look at that. Um, we'll say goodbye to the sergeant if we catch him. But uh, yeah. Oh, go! Oh, it's all it's all mixed up here. You got to put the label at the front. I think that's what the hipsters do. But um, thank you for watching. We've got a bit of out of focus, that looks good. I'm in focus, I think. Yeah. And uh, every day, around 5 p.m., 4.30 p.m., the cash man, uh, alleged murderer, is taken back to his cell here in Manchester. And the reason he's being tried in Manchester and not Liverpool is that the establishment does not know if he'd get a fair trial in Liverpool because he's a Liverpool gangster, allegedly. So uh, that's it. Look at that. Copland. It's Copland right now. And uh, it's goodbye from me. It's an unofficial goodbye from them. We'll say thank you to the sergeant as we go. Take care. All the best. And that's it. Thanks for watching.